Hello and welcome to the latest Watching Brief special bulletin with me, Andy Brockman. You might have noticed that I'm flying solo again today, and that's because Archeo Soup Towers is still a plague house. Uh, Mark's voice just wasn't up to uh, joining what was meant to be a two-hander today and the discussion. So hoping that the weekend will see him fit and uh, us able to do a uh, question of archaeology and all the other things we had planned next week, um, I'll carry on with the bulletin for today, which is to do with a something of a bind which the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists has got itself into over the last couple of weeks. So basically the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists is the body which sets out to set and monitor professional standards in archaeology in Britain and overseas and it's facing something of a crisis of confidence among at least a proportion of its membership after two events which have cast doubt really on the organisation's influence within the industry and competence to represent its members interests. Now, the first of this double whammy um, occurred on the 26th of January when CIFA announced that it was informed that archaeology was no longer to be a recognised trade under the Construction Skills Certification Scheme. Uh, it's abbreviated to CSCS. Um, and the, it won't be recognised after 30th of April this year, 2024. Now, this caused immediate confusion and even alarm among archaeologists working as part of the construction industry on work funded by developers, which is where a lot of British archaeology happens. This was because while it's not required by law, holding a valid CSCS card of the correct type is required by many construction site operators as a condition of coming onto a site to work. Now, Archaeologists also expressed a concern that the lack of clarity about the implications of the changes could lead to individuals and archaeological companies being forced to engage in expensive training and qualifications um, to obtain cards which would only be usable for a matter of a few months. And the situation was made particularly galling by the organisers of the scheme, making it clear that there wouldn't be any refunds. Now, more fundamentally, uh, members of CIFA, the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists, and other, archae uh, other archaeological groups, including the British Archaeological Jobs Resource, um, which is a Facebook group, an influential Facebook group, took to social media to express concern that this represented a downgrading of the role of archaeologists in the construction sector, effectively placing what is an almost entirely graduate entry profession alongside cleaners, security guards and installers of car parking equipment. The Chartered Institute for Archaeologists in particular responded by saying, quote, although CSCS's decision sends an unfortunate signal, it doesn't change the fact that archaeology is an integral part of the construction process, which is required in the planning process and delivers positive public benefits as part of the development process. Sefer uh, added that the organisation was working with the employers body, the Federation of Archaeological Managers and Employers, abbreviated to FAME very often, to clarify the situation. Current guidance on the CIFA website tells individual members and employers to simply take up the matter with clients on a case-by-case -case basis. And in the case of any problems, employers are told not to contact CIFA, but to contact CSCS itself, the organisers of the scheme. CIFA official had told British uh, the British Archaeological Jobs Resource Facebook group that while CIFA hadn't been consulted about the decision to drop archaeology from, from the scheme, it was at least given an opportunity to correct the press release about them being dropped. Um, that was about to be eclipsed by the reaction to another statement to members uh, released by CIFA apparently without any warning and let alone any attempt to prepare the ground. And it is quite a momentous statement. Quote, CIFA is no longer issuing minimum salary recommendations in the UK. And this comes barely weeks after the previous recommended salary minimums came into effect. The statement went on to explain that the search for an alternative has been underpinned by the need to be clear about the different roles of a professional body and a trade union regarding issues of low pay and by our concern that focusing on minimum salaries may detract from the real value of archaeological skills. Um, Responding to that statement, members of CIFA Active on social media exploded really with indignation. Among the kinder comments greeting the announcement was the question of why the decision had been made before this new approach of, quote, benchmarking had been worked out and was in place. However, more visible was the anger that archaeology's main representative body appears to have abandoned any attempt to protect the lowest paid members, of what's often perceived even by its own practitioners, to be a notoriously poorly paid and insecure profession which lacks effective career paths and has a high turnover of especially early career staff. There was even a short-lived petition um, launched by a CIFA member calling on the board of CIFA to resign as a result of the, of, of the statement. 
Um, meanwhile, the archaeology branch of the Trade Union Prospect issued a statement in response saying that while it understood that CETA had to act within its remit as a professional body, as far as Prospect was concerned, quote, nothing had changed. And it committed union staff and members to continuing to work with others in the industry, including uh, the, 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 the Badger Group and CIFA, um, to improve paying conditions. Um, the union said prospect reps and members will continue to work hard on tackling difficult financial positions that many uh, that many find themselves in, along with continuing our work in areas such as equality and safety. Now, as a trade union prospect, which claims to have over 1,400 members working in archaeology across some 90 employers, uh, it exists to try and influence directly paying conditions of its members. And a groundswell of opinion on archaeological social media seems to be suggesting that membership of prospect and other trade unions, which recruit archaeologists such as Unison, might be a more effective use of their money than membership of CIFA, at least as far as uh, better paying conditions are concerned. Um, one group, however, appears to be highly satisfied with CIFA's new stance. The chair of the Archaeological Employers Body, the Federation of Archaeological Managers and Employers, FAME, uh, that's Dr. Kenneth Aitchison, took to Twitter to state, quote, big announcement from at Institute ARC. They are no longer issuing hashtag minimum, hashtag salary recommendations for hashtag archaeologists in the UK. It's the right decision to make, and the Institute had tied itself in knots over this for years, end quote. Now, the background to this is that in 2023, FAME withdrew from the Archaeological Industry Working Group, uh, which was discussing paying conditions, stating that it had received legal advice that participation in that kind of discussion um, could be seen as a breach of UK competition law and represent illegal price fixing. Some archaeologists have viewed the leadership of fame inserting itself into the discussion and endorsing CIFA's new position with some concern. One senior archaeologist told the pipeline that the relationship between CIFA and fame had been regarded as too close for years. And another greeted uh, the, um, uh, a fresh statement from CIFA on the 15th of February with the acid question as to whether CIFA had checked the content with Dr. Aitchison. That question was pertinent because the new statement appeared to be a reaction to the hostile reaction of the initial withdrawal from setting pay minima and appeared to commit CIFA to working with its members, Prospect and Badger, to develop a new system of pay benchmarking. Um, is that pay minimum by any other name? Anyway, the statement contained possibly the understatement of the archaeological year so far in that it said, quote, we appreciate that recent announce, uh, announcements regarding the removal of minimum salary recommendations by CIFA may have been met with concern. Remember, there was a petition asking the board of CIFA to resign. On the 15th of February, um, the, the, the new statement concluded by summing up CIFA's wider position. We fully understand members' concerns about the removal of salary recommendations, but the board of directors has a duty to ensure CIFA works within its remit as a professional body and in accordance with its charter and bylaw. Moving the focus to ranges of pay will provide more useful tool, uh, a more useful tool to help employers and employees make informed decisions about rates of pay and removes the focus on minimum. This was followed by another statement uh, on the 22nd of February. Moving the focus away from minimum salaries, we will be better able to provide a more useful tool to help employers and employees make informed decisions about rates of pay. Salary benchmarking will also help support CIFA and partner organisations to advocate for higher salaries. It will also ensure CIFA works within its remit as a professional body and in accordance with its charter and bylaw. Uh, responding to members citing other chartered bodies such as the Royal College of Nursing, which do engage directly in manners, uh, matters of, of pay and asking why CIFA couldn't do the same. CIFA added, the majority of these are based on processes of salary benchmarking and are clearly set as guidance and or information and are in no way required. The process of salary benchmarking um, CIFA is working towards will adopt a similar approach and put CIFA in a better position to advocate for better paying conditions. An administrator on the British Archaeological Jobs Resource Facebook group summed up the disquiet being expressed towards the performance of the managers at CIFA. Quote, everything has been presented as a fait accompli. There's been a distinct lack of cons consultation and transparency. This is a dismissive way to act towards members. It's another disappointing response. While CIFA may hope that the evolution of its policy towards pay in, in the archaeology industry will end, will in the end satisfy the membership of the organisation that their interests are being properly represented by CIFA. It's inevitable that some will recall with concern that evolution 
can also result in a dead end or even an extinction event. And it probably doesn't help the optics of the controversy that while appearing to withdraw from direct matters of low pay in archaeology, in January this year, just a few weeks ago, CIFA was advertising for a new chief executive on a salary of between eighty and one hundred thousand pounds. That's it for this watching brief special report. If you like the watching brief, if you want to support what we do and or the pipeline, uh, you can support the watching brief specifically on Patreon, and you can buy the pipeline a coffee. See you next time.